On this episode of The Mompreneur Show, I'm talking with Erin Chase. She is a wife, a mother of four boys, and a founder of Five Dollar Dinners. Now, when I had Erin on the show last year, episode 22, we dove deep into her story, how she started, how she manages her team, how she manages her email box. It was an incredible conversation. And this time, we want to take it to the next level and dig deep into the behind the scenes of her business, specifically into the relationship building and how she has become this incredible connector or how she is actually um, taking that connector um, strength of hers and really using it to her advantage to build her business, to partner up with other people. And she's seriously blown me away. And actually just a few weeks ago, I found that uh, maybe a few months ago, found that out about her is that she she knows everyone in the industry and then some. And I was like, okay, Erin, we got to get you on the show. We got to talk about this. Um, I really want to pick her brain. Thank you again so so much for being here. I want to thank um, two wonderful sponsors really quickly for making this show happen. And one of them is Made On, all natural skincare made by an incredible family in Northern California. If you go to hardlotion.com, they have incredible products. Uh, purchase some, add some to your cart, and then you use the code Vicky, V I C K Y, to get five bucks off. Vicky, V I C K Y, for five bucks off. Good deal. Uh, and also, Audible. Audible is a collection of uh, dozens and dozens of audiobooks. That is how I get all my books read. I recently uh, listened to a book called Rework, recommended to uh, me by Nathan Berry. It was mind blown, completely, completely not your average business book. So many strategies that have actually blown my mind. You can get that book free or any book that you want by going to audible.com forward slash Vicky, audible.com forward slash Vicky to get your free book and 30 day free trial. All right. Thank you so much for joining us again. We are live every single Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Vicky Lashenko, and this is a show that helps you win in business without losing at home. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Erin, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me on again. It is absolutely such an honor to have you on. And as I mentioned in um, er- earlier, is that I've known you for your five dollar dinners and what a rock star you are in that business industry and in you know the whole blogging food um, area. And then when I saw an article from Noah Kagan mentioning you and how you've helped him grow his business, I was like, whoa, 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 stop right there, Aaron <laughs> Chase, the five dollar dinner girl. Are you kidding me? And so. And then I reached out to you and you shared an incredible side of your business that I have I have never knew about. And I'm sure a lot of people don't know about it either. But so ladies, if you're watching, listening, replay, whatever, this is like top secret information nowhere else online <laughs> that you will find from the amazing Erin Chase. And if you are building a blog and want to take, to, take it to the next level, Erin is the girl to learn from. So Erin... Please tell me, like, how in the world did you start your journey and how did you start? Um, and I, I don't want you to tell your story all over again, because ladies, if you want to listen to her story, go to episode 22. Really good story. But I want you to um, share with us how you started building these incredible relationships and how how strategic is it strategic? How is it planned? Really want to hear it all. So you kind of mentioned it earlier, like all boats rise together, right? Yes, 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 yes. And so that's kind of what I'm all about. I love, and I love connecting people too, which is kind of a different piece to all this, but go back to 2008 Twitter. Uh, Anybody who was blogging was chatting on Twitter, like before Twitter became like the news and the spam and the like Twitter was actually where we all talked. And so we chatted on Twitter and there was an event and we um, were chatting and then there was a local Ohio, I was living in Ohio at the time, bloggers group. And they were like, hey, we should get together for dinner. And I'm like, okay, so I met some strangers on the internet and I'm gonna go meet them for dinner. I'm insane. And this was like back in 2008 when that was still kind of like maybe not a great idea. Um, Now, I mean, it happens all the time at conferences, right? But, and so I went to this little town, like it was dark, it was like winter in Ohio and, I'm like texting my husband on my flip phone. Like if I die, this is where I am. I it do that like all the time. So shady funny. town, like shady town. Well, turns out business partner, still great friends with a lot of the gals that were at this dinner. And like, 
we had the most hysterical time because we connected over the fact that we were these like hilarious people on the internet, like whatever, how is that a thing? But we had the best time. So that was like the first meeting. And then we went to a conference and then to be quite honest, the conference fell flat for where Mm. I was and what I wanted to do and what Mm. I, I needed to do because I really quickly, you know, go back to the episode 22, but that's that it became a business for me really quickly. And I needed help. I needed experts. I needed people who were, you know, one step ahead of me in this whole game. And we created our own event essentially. And so that was eight years ago. We've done eight of them now. So we have, I've been a um, partner with uh, two business partners, one who I met at the dinner where I thought I was going to die, um, Andrea. And Tony Anderson is, um, the three of us have run this event for years and years. And we recently kind of redid our, um, our, our sort of setup and model um, to become a pre-event for a much larger event. We did that two, three, this will be the third time we've done that. And then this year we partnered with Darren Rouse from Pro Blogger. So we have this like Darren plus the three of us kind of combined together in what we uh, the our event is the success incubator happening in October of this year. And so it's kind of evolved over time and it's evolved as we've grown, as we've changed, we've evolved it because our whole community, um, our digital collab community, digital collab paired up with um, Darren and we have the success incubator. Anyways, it's kind of, we've evolved the event over the years to meet, to meet our own needs yes. as we've grown the business and along the way, you know, along the way have just been connected with and met the coolest people ever. Like, and, and I think that that's part of it was, you know, me hosting this event, um, but even just being at the event, you know, has, has helped get lots of people connected. And it's just this, you know, it's just this big, happy family of like, if you have a question, drop it in our group because somebody's going to know the answer. Right. Um, and I think that that's really kind of, if I look back, it's, it's, it's always been, I've been surround or I've surrounded myself with, I guess, or I've surrounded, mm-hmm. I've been surrounded by people who are right there with me, who might have the answer and who might, you know, who, who can help me and I can help them. Like it's gotta be mutually yes. beneficial. Right. And so that has been like, even last night at like 11, 15, I got a message from Molly and I was like, yes, here's somebody that I know. Like it was just a connection thing. Like she's like, Hey, who do, who do you know? Who does this? Um, it isn't going to charge me $4,000 a month for it. And it wasn't something that was worth 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 spending $4,000 a month on. Right. And so it's just like, okay, I know somebody, let me forward you the email, you know? So it's just that kind of thing. But, and she's helped me in other ways, similar ways. Like it just kind of goes back and forth. Right. And so it's just been, you know, I've been doing this a long time, almost nine years. And so that time has allowed me to, you know, create, build and nurture over time, those relationships. Okay. So I did not know so much about this. So we're going to like track back, but that is absolutely incredible how um, you establish yourself as an expert essentially by creating this event. And it is so powerful. Like, unbelievably and I did not experience this until I ran my own it's like a little meetup no big deal I mean it was a big deal in my head like oh my goodness who do I think who do I think I am all these blocks but like I think that's essentially what you got to do in order to be looked at as an expert um so how did you how did you come up with the idea to even um start this thing you like Andrea um the other guy um what were the steps and how long did it take for you guys to put on your first event so the first event was at another event and it sold out we had a people standing in line out wow of the room. hold on your first event <laughs> yeah because people needed it like people wanted it people needed it it was all people we were talking to on twitter and skype groups were a thing back then yeah, yeah. Um, all these things that make me really old and sound vintage even yeah okay so <laughs> but like we were everybody wanted to know and wanted to learn from from us who were already successful what were we doing that was different. What were we, you know, and how were we staying on trend as, I mean, oh my word, so many things change. Right. And I think for me now, it's more about like, what's the next thing? Am I doing that thing? Right. Like just keeping up with all the things we have to keep up with. Right. But so, and then we, so we saw that the demand was there and then we did a, a a full, that was just an an evening. I think it was just a a dinner and and it wasn't even a full day. I think it was Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I had a nursing baby with me. I don't remember. Goodness. Okay. It was a, I'm pretty sure it was an evening and then with like training and masterminding almost back then, what would now be known yeah. as masterminding. 
we did then. Um, yeah, and then we later that year, we decided it needed to be a full weekend event. So we hosted our first one up in um, Colorado. So, Oh yeah. my goodness, absolutely uh, absolutely remarkable. So I'm going to go back a little bit and, and talk about the Twitter thing. So <laughs> I did that too. And it is absolutely incredible. Those relationships that I've built on Twitter and then I've actually met in person, like mind blown, amazing. But okay, so you meet them. You meet them on Twitter. You meet them um, personally. You have you have this connection, obviously. But how do you nurture that when you're back at home? You know, maybe an ocean away from from these people. Like, how do you nurture this relationship? So you're not really that far away, right? You're as far away as nowadays. Your phone. You know, back then it That's was true. your computer with your Twitter feed running, right? Um, and Twitter was really cool up until they ruined it. But no, I'm just kidding. I, I I'm on Twitter, sort of. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you just keep chatting. Like if you have a question, you reach out. If you have a need, you reach out. Um, you just, you have to be proactive and just keep talking. Um, you know, you mentioned Noah Kagan. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I know that if I needed something or he needed something from me, then we would just strike it back up right where we left off. Right. Exactly. Or if I happen to be in Austin nearby, Hey, come grab a drink or, Hey, I'm coming by the office, get behind the bar. He has a bar in his office. Right. Like, so, you know, like you just kind of pick it back up. So when yes. I travel and someone's there, it's like, hey, let's meet for coffee or let's like physically get together if we can make it happen. Right. If not, no biggie. We'll just keep chatting on Messenger or Facebook or Twitter. Or OK, <laughs> so let, let's say that you have someone that you want to reach out to, uh, someone that you want to befriend, get to know who has no idea who you are. How would you approach them? I would find somebody who knew them that we could connect us. I'm a huge fan of that um, connection piece. I think it, it just helps with, it helps soften the intro. Mm -hmm. um, but if I needed to, I would just put some street cred into an email um, and just say, Hey, this is who I am. I have a question for you. Um, five minutes, hop on something to chat about it. If not, respond back and say, you're not interested. Like I always give people an out also wow. um, because I think that that, you know, I, this is, I'll, I'll just throw this out there cause it sounds going to sound terrible, but like we all have so much ment mental and like physical bandwidth in the day. And we all have these massive networks, but like the thought of like, you know, do I need to add 67 new friends to my network? Like sometimes it makes my brain want to explode. Just, that's just a brain thing, a human brain thing. Right. Um, so I think giving an out to somebody, especially if, you know, there's the hierarchy. We'll just be clear about that. Like if there are four levels, levels up the hierarchy, you, you need either someone to do an intro or you've got to give them an out in your um, initial approach. And then maybe at one follow-up email beyond that, I would not try to communicate with them if you got a non-response. But it's amazing to me, the people who are responsive, like I've emailed Seth Godin straight up and gotten a response in like 20 minutes. Like it's, it's really like, I think most people, you know, regardless of where you are on the levels or whatever. I think most people are pretty responsive. If you email me and it's not spam email, like, Hey, I'm going to get you 80,000 new leads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to email you back. Like mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm going to delete that kind of an email, but I'm going to yeah. email you back if you reach out to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And ladies, if, um, Erin is very proactive in her email, like it's, it's, she, <laughs> oh, that's like my dream to be like an inbox zero type of gal. Um, but like anytime, email. And actually, Erin, you're the one. And we talk, you, ladies, if you want to dig deep into this, episode 22 is really, really good. Um, you're the one that actually helped me create that beautiful system of where I emailed the guest a week prior to get them to fill out that link Um the form of all the details that I need from them in order to make the show happen because I emailed it to you like months before um and I mentioned this on another show too but I just want to say that you're the one that I would I would just email them like months before and say just fill this out but you're like I will fill it out the Monday the week right before. before and mm -hmm. I was like wait what a great idea that way I don't clog their brain like two months in advance because that's when I usually book guests and uh, and then uh, you book it and, and you already know you're so you say your mind okay a, a week later I have the show and I, I'm gonna you know talk about these questions so 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 good so thank you so much for that because you completely like transformed my way of guest <laughs> onboarding so 
Okay. That's cool. Yay. No, abso- <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So I want to go back a little bit and talk about the hierarchy that you mentioned earlier. And I talk about this too, because goodness, like it's so hard for me and I don't want to, ladies, I love you all. You know that I try my best to respond to your emails, to your Instagram messages, um, to your Facebook messages. Um, but the, it, Aaron, I want to, I want you to talk about the hierarchy as well is that you can't, you can to me, <laughs> but like consider if you want to reach out to someone who is way ahead of the game. Like for example, Aaron, you're like, you're a seasoned blogger. You've been in this forever, for a decade, literally. Um, Almost. <laughs> yeah. And then someone who is just starting out, reaching out to you. Um, what kind of response should they expect to receive? Should they receive, oh my goodness, let's be besties. Or should be like, what kind of response should they expect? So we're not going to be besties. I'm sorry. Um, my inner circle is full. Um, (laughs) like I, not, not that I don't mean that to be rude. I just mean it to be this. I'm going to respond with a resource. that's going to help them. It's not going to be mine. I don't have anything that's going to help a beginner blogger. Um, I, I might have something soon, um, that would help them, but I don't now. Right. And so I'm, I'm just going to say, you need to go over and see my friend Tabitha's Um, content. She has amazing Mm. content for beginner bloggers. Go over there, join her group. She's going to help you out. Cause I, I'm not, I can't, that's not what I have to offer. Um, I don't do one-on-one coaching. I get asked that all the time and I just have a, I'm sorry, I don't do, you know, one-to-one coaching. Um, I am working on a program that would be more of a group coaching style that'll be out later this year. But like, I don't, I I just, I don't, there are not enough minutes in the day for that. Exactly. So it's just, you just have to be clear and kind and, you know, provide something that's going to be useful and helpful for them so that you still are connected, but you're not necessarily connected in a bestie kind of way. Yes. Okay. So while we're talking about this, might as well just dig deeper into this. I'm pretty sure there's maybe high school friends, you know, maybe far relatives that reach out to you and say, oh, Erin, hey, girl. Hey, so how's it going? Hey, can you, okay, I'm working on this project. And like, they want to be talking with you all the time. They want to be hanging out with you, which, you know, it's so flattering. It's so awesome. But how do you deal with that? So if I get asked to like help with their business or refer people or, um, maybe not straight away, maybe you're just getting warmed up and you feel that I, I see it. I see right through it. Um, I just usually do just a, Hey, great to hear from you. Um, and just kind of leave it at that. Uh, and if it's, and if they get a little bit more, you know, I don't, not aggressive isn't the right word, but just like mm-hmm. maybe persistent. Lightly pushy, persistent. That's a good mm-hmm. word. Persistent. Yep. If they get persistent with, Hey, this is my new thing. Hey, share it. Hey, do this. Hey, Hey, come by this. I'm just, I just say, no, I don't participate in that. And I just have a blanket policy. Um, I have my own business right? I'm promoting my own stuff. I have built my own affiliate program. I'm going to focus on those guys. And I'm really sorry, but I don't have the bandwidth to help. And that's, you know, do I feel rude saying that? Um, not rude. It's just taking care of myself. It's taking care of my business. It's taking care of my family. Um, because if I stretched myself too thin and got into your business, you, you probably couldn't afford it. If uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you how much I would charge you, exactly, right? So, which exactly. isn't, it's just, that's, that's the nature of, you know, you start in your own business, you're all in drilled into it. Then you get to this point where it's growing and mm. it's, it's very successful. And I, that's what you do. Like, I, I'm sorry, I can't. You really I have can't. to protect your time yeah. and your energy. Right. Because right. after all, you're right. You're running this empire. And then you also have four boys and a hubby. <laughs> yes. Who actually just, just quit his job. So he's going to be doing the entrepreneur thing now too. That is so <laughs> exciting. Yeah, it's it's a little little crazy, but it, I'm I'm excited for the reason. But I wanted to add this though on yeah. on that when I do have to just say no, I'm really sorry, I can't help you with that. I will usually offer some piece of oh, well, you should try this um, that might help you. Something that mm. I maybe know about the space, the social media space, the social media marketing space, the content marketing space. I know a lot about that. So I might just offer one small piece of advice as a, okay, now go run with that. And I'm sorry, I can't help you um, cool. beyond that. And so at least I'm being helpful um, without being, you know, just straight up, no rude. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, just yeah. Sort of, 
you're you're yeah you're very you have to be clear clear boundaries offer them a piece of advice and then you know they're going to do their thing and you have to do your thing um but i am all for chatting and helping people if you run into me at the grocery store and you want to walk walk alongside me i'll talk to you until i leave the store like that's not going to happen right yeah but i'm bare i want to help people yeah Um, but then there's this whole um that actually happened recently someone was like hey we need to re-record this interview um, we had recorded like two months earlier and I was like, well, I am about to get in the car. Like you literally could not have texted me at the right time. Oh. Turn it, get your recorder on. You have 20 minutes. Like, wow. and because it was a re-record, I could, I could sort of say that, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't wow. have a lot of time. I'm going to be in the car by myself without my kids for about 20 minutes. Let's get this done right now. And we mm. did. So, it, you know, that's kind of a lucky sort of moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't know. You kind of have to weigh all those things, but I really want to help people. And so I try my best to offer some piece of, Mm -hmm. whether it's a connection to someone else or just a piece of advice, Hey, you should try this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really? That's really helpful. And you know, I, I think that not everyone is like you, not everyone will take the time to even respond. And I understand them too, as well, because you know, it it also takes energy, but the fact that you take the time to do that is so sweet um, because you do have a gazillion other things to do. And, (laughs) Absolutely. So I want to I want to talk to you about small asks. I know you've mentioned this before we went live. And this is really, really interesting to me because I have and like you build incredible relationships from Twitter, from Instagram. I mean, like, can you imagine meeting some like you? I know you can imagine. But ladies, I've met people like on Instagram who later a year later came over and slept on a in my guest room and like attended conference with me like like that kind of level and it's like it's divine I think it's like totally like from God like here God takes advantage of social networks as well to bring you to people that you need to know so I I so do not stray away from it thinking it's creepy or it's like online like you can meet the most incredible people um, through Instagram through through Facebook you know still through through Twitter maybe you can still meet somebody through Twitter but anyway so like I asked you, like, how do you nurture these relationships? Like, and you said small asks. Can you please talk about that? Yeah. So I think it's just like over, over time, you're like, Hey, I need this. Who do I know that would, could help me with that? Okay. And then you're like, Hey, quick question. Da, 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 da. That's it. One thing small. I don't want to take away people's brain space of course. or energy or productivity time or whatever. Right. And this happened last week. I said, Hey, who do you know? That's a graphic animator, Steve Chu right? Mm-hmm. He's crazy busy. And he had a, he put on a live event last week and here I am on Monday. Hey, I know sellers is this weekend, but who do you know? That's a graphic animator. Like, I'm a jerk, right? He's like, I personally don't know anybody look on Fiverr. And I was like, okay, Fiverr it is. It, it, I just thought I would rather have a personal connection to somebody who that you've worked with maybe exactly. or that you know who's in this space. I want to support our network. And he just didn't know anybody. So I went with Fiverr, found a guy, he did a perfect job. And here we are. I've, the, the work is done. Does that make sense? So that was a really small, I would call that a small ask. Just like, who do you know? Um, can you share this to your audience? Because your audience is right for whatever it was that I wanted to say in this moment or whatever. Okay. Um, just real quick things that aren't going to be okay. like, hey, let's work on this project. Exactly. Um, Nobody has time for a project with you. Okay, so we'll get into the projects, but um, what about like asking for an introduction to a specific person? Like, is that too much to ask? Because sometimes, no, No? okay. And do you ever make it easy for them? I think you can, yeah, totally ask for intros. I just say, I think if you're going to make, make it easy for them. I would say if, if I were to go, let's say I were to go to Steve Chu, right? Yeah. He knows, he knows way more people. He's in the upper echelons higher than me, right? Whatever. Um, but like, if I were to say, Hey, I want to have an intro to, oh my gosh, I don't even know who, right. Um, he will totally do it. And if it's somebody that has no clue who I am, maybe we've not met physically or not from his event and da da da, then I would say, Hey, Steve, include this. And this is the reason I want to talk to them. So he can go in there and say, this is what she does. And so he actually is the one who introduced me to Noah and he introduced, I'd have to go back and find the email. I should have dug, dug it up because it was hilarious, but he introduced me to Noah. He's and such now, a good writer. Oh, he's hilarious. Oh, and now gosh. well, in, in Photoshop too, but so now, and that's one of the things that he uses. He uses his humor and his snarkiness in Photoshop editing. Yeah. 
<laughs> you should see some of the things that he's photoshopped of me. I will. Some of them are not uh, <laughs> not That's inappropriate, hilarious. but um, <laughs> like Game of Thrones with my face. Yes. Like he's so funny. Hilarious. Um, pillow fight like whatever he's he's so funny and i think so, that's the way he like gets people that's to love connect people yeah. exactly so if you want to connect with me go on my instagram and say something super snarky because i'll totally respond right with and you know why that has which yeah that has worked <laughs> i'm not a so snarky well. person but i love to read snarky stuff <laughs> Right. So I, I agree. And like, I feel like the comments um, in on Instagram, Facebook, they're such a great way to get your attention. So for example, ladies, if you're looking for a way to connect with someone who is maybe, you know, two, three steps ahead of you um, and don't let that stop you that they're two, three steps ahead of you, but you got to warm them up. And I feel like Instagram comments or Facebook comments are such a great way because that person will keep seeing you in their feed and be like, oh, who is this? Because I mean, I've met like Amy Porterfield, let's for example, let's say for example, like three years ago, and she recognized me. Hey, Vicky, it's so good to meet you, like from Instagram, because like mm -hmm. I would just annoy her with comments, and but not not like <laughs> I anyway. So okay, I want to talk to you about um, how you even met Steve Chu. Like, how did that even happen? He, I don't know. Don't remember. He was in the personal finance blogger space. I, yes. I'm going to make this up. So Jim Wang is a business partner of mine. And we actually, Jim and I disagree on how we met. Like he That's thinks we met so in one hilarious. place. And I think we met in another, but whatever. That's that hard. was many years ago. It doesn't matter. But we got connected into the personal finance blogger space through JD Roth, who used to write this yeah. site, Get Rich Slowly. And then he sold it years ago. We're still great friends with him. Wow. Um, and anyways, it must have been at one of the, the FinCon events, the per, big personal finance okay. and financial media event that happens every year. That is probably, no, 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 no. I know where we met. World Domination Summit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tony Anderson and I met him at World Domination Summit and we completely overwhelmed him. Oh. Like, I think he was like, who are these crazy girls and why will they not stop talking? And they're go-getters and they're get stuff gunners and whoa i think we completely i think we completely blew him away yeah and we would just talk we just talked and he was um just in a different space doing e-commerce yeah. and doing e-commerce training like just yeah. a different space but we just learned a lot from each other just in our conversations um at wds there's a lot of free time there yeah and so are you we, coming this year Mm -mm. Oh. No, not this year. I think I was there a couple years. This was a couple years ago. That's where we met, but he was already connected with JD. It, it was probably through JD actually, because JD would have been there too. And yeah, we he was. Met. He was there. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, he, I think he goes like every year. Okay. He, I see him. Yeah. Year. Yeah. He, and I'm, so I'm pretty sure, like, I knew Steve from before, like, just in the space, but then I had never met him. And then we met there. And then you know, and then at FinCon and then we've had him at our event and it's just kind of been, and he's actually business partners also with Tony, the event that they just had this past week. And so it kind of, we're kind of this like incestuous family. Okay. So awesome. I love that. <laughs> Connecting, really sharing your, and you mentioned a keyword. You said, um, anyway, you had a conversation that was very, very valuable for the both of you. I think that's key. You were standing and pestering him and asking and picking his brain, but you were also giving him something. But how did you know what kind of value to give him? I feel like that's my biggest thing is like, I end my emails with, let me know how I can help you. Mm -hmm. Let me know how I can help and support you. But there's that miscommunication, like, well, what can I do for him? And that person thinks, what can, what, what can she do for me? Like, there's that, like, how do you bridge that gap? Well, first you have to talk about things like whiskey and Coke. Like, that's the conversation <laughs> I remember having with him. Initially, I was like, what do you drink? Like, we were sitting, it was like three o'clock in the afternoon in Portland in a bar somewhere, like near the WDS yeah, event, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, and yeah. Um, I think he thought it was weird that I had white wine. Like, I don't know. Cause I don't even remember what he was doing, but we were talking about that. And then it was like, okay, so what do you do? Cause we didn't know each other. Like what, oh, what do you do? Hey, how do you do that? Hey, what does that look like? Ooh, where, where is that? Can I go read about that on your site? Like, and then it just becomes this whole, like you just start talking. And when you start talking and you're in this, like, we're these weird entrepreneurs who work yes. on the internet. How do you make money on the internet? Like, you know, my aunts and uncles think that I'm super weird, yeah. you know, not yeah. really. They, they love and appreciate what I do, but, <laughs> but like early on it was, 
you can't make it's money confusing. on the internet. Like it's, who does that? But yeah. when you find people that do what you do yeah. um, and are doing better at it than you are, uh, maybe, or just doing it differently, you learn from them and you just, yeah. you just talk. I remember, I remember we talked, we skipped sessions. We talked, we talked, we talked, and then we moved to a place to have dinner and we talked and we talked. And then, um, Kira's Kira was with us, Kira, um, the son of it. She's, she was on cupcake wars. She was the first person wow. to win the cupcake wars. And so she, she shows up like, it was just this whole, like, wait, ha- what, huh? Like I have that happen to me a lot. Like, how am I in this situation? How do I know this person? It just, it just happens. You know, um, I, it's cool. I, I feel like it's the luck in a way. I mean, I think that, um, it, it is orchestrated by God in God in some way. Like I truly believe in that because sometimes I'm like the people that I meet, I'm like, God, was that you? Because it, there's just no other way. And so, um, and when you meet these kind of people at conferences, like you feel the connection right away. But here's my question. Now, I didn't even think I was going to go this this route. But you're a female. I'm a female. We're both married. We both have kids. We both travel to conferences. We meet a ton of people. We have lunch and dinners and coffees and what whatever with males all the time. And I'm just curious, like, we're both bubbly how do you, how do you get, you know, get yourself across in a bubbly, fun way without uh, coming across as flirty or without giving the wrong idea? Like, I'm really curious about this and I'm so sorry I put you on the spot. Oh my gosh, but. you're so funny. No, I, I'm i just, I'm a fun person, but I'm not a flirtatious person. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, I have the boundary there. I'm not going to go there. Um, I'm going to keep my hands to myself, you know, every now and then you want, that's really a great, like, eh, uh, I don't know. Um, it happens. It's kind of inevitable. I feel like depending on the situation, but just, you know, try and stay in groups or, you know, keep your girlfriend nearby. I, I mean, it's tricky. I have had moments of having a meal alone or it's happened, but it's, it's in a place. So I don't know. Um, that's a tough one, but I think, you know, we're professionals. Exactly. I'm going to be in a conversation about our business. I'm going to be very professional. And I think you just kind of give off that vibe of like, oh, wow, she's really fun, but she's really smart. And holy cow, she knows what she's doing. Does that make sense? Like, I think you, you just have to know what that looks like in a conversation because we're all different. We're, you know, absolutely. And know your own boundaries too. Yeah. 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 So Really good. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aaron. Because I know that Michael Hyatt has like this great write up about like his own boundaries and how he never has um, lunch or whatever any anytime with with a woman. And I'm just like, man, that would be so hard to do because I travel a lot and I don't always have, a, you know, a girlfriend nearby. And oftentimes I am in a conversation over lunch, over dinner or whatever with a male, uh, you know, and I agree like a public place. And I feel like as long as you know your own boundaries, you're good. I think yeah, that's really important. Yeah. Cool. That's a, it's a tough line to draw, like above yeah. reproach. And that's that's why Michael Hyatt does that. And yeah. I totally respect that. Yeah. Do, I, do I seek that out? No. Does yeah. it happen? Has it happened on occasion once or twice, three times maybe? Yeah. Um, yes. But not, yeah, just know your boundaries. And if you're really worried about it, then don't go. Right? Yes, like, exactly. If you're concerned about people seeing you then don't go there. Does that make sense? Just exactly. Reschedule, um, meet, uh, well, yeah, don't, maybe don't meet in a bar. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but like, um, just, yeah, reschedule it or just bail on it. If it's, if it's, if you're really worried about it or you're concerned about, you know, your relationship or your reputation, really. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So like, if you're gonna, yeah, if for example, I don't, I don't uphold myself to that kind of like, you know, I never sit, sit alone, you know, whatever public place with somebody else, just with a male. Uh, but if I can you imagine I would say that publicly? Yeah, I never do that. And then people will see me do that. That's really unethical or, right. you know, un- inauthentic. So I think that it's really important what you uphold yourself to and what you tell the public as well. So that's really good. OK, I really want to talk to you about affiliate marketing. I know it's like we completely took a round circle um, towards this, but like you have such an incredible incredible affiliate program like you are on top of it on top of all the emails the payouts like you are so good like how do you do that first of all do you have an affiliate manager how do you get affiliates to sign up for your 
programs because I know like when you start out, you got to go seek them out. Like what, what are some of your strategies? Uh, first off our network, my network, right. Um, it's just being around a long time. Yeah. We have, we just invite people, um, through the network. Um, I will say that we are not amazing at outreach as far as like, Hey, you should mm. join our program. Yeah. That is not something we've ever been really great at. Yeah. Not really on purpose, but just haven't been, um, we'll work on that. Our, our thematic goal right now is member communication. Mm. And so it's not high on the priority list. As soon as the thematic goal switches from member communication, the next one will be um, marketing. And then the affiliate slice of that marketing sort of piece, puzzle, pie, pizza will be pretty, we'll go pretty, we'll go more aggressive there then, but that's not what our thematic goal is right now. So we're not um, really trying to be aggressive with the outreach. We do have people come to us all the time. I do have, you know, become an affiliate links, you know, strategically placed in the bottom right mm. corner, you know? So we do have people who join just by finding it. Yeah. And then we have other people who email us and say, Hey, what do you have going on? What can we share? I'm wow. sharing. This. How can I promote it? Um, and so I do have an affiliate manager. She manages okay. all of our affiliate communications and just, you know, making sure that we have well, whatever upcoming promotion or campaign we have happening, that she's getting the information out there with long enough lead time and then follow up reminders. Um, it's just, it's how I, our affiliate communication is what I would want to receive mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. as somebody promoting. I do other affiliate stuff as of well. Course. And so that's how we run. That is basically what I would want and what we send out. Exactly. Um, not exactly. being too much, but Hey, this is coming up and then, Hey, this is this week. Right. So yeah. um, just kind of a little lead time plus the reminder and the payouts happen on the 10th of every month. I have a slot every 10th of every month. Amazing. So how, like how important it is for, is it for your business to have that affiliate promotion reaching the people that you would have never reached? It's probably about between 25 and 35% of all sales depending on the month and the campaign. It really depends. So it's a huge part of it. So that's why, um, yeah. Amazing. When when we do ramp, we've got to get all this member stuff set up and this is all done and ready. Um, One thing at a time. We're chipping away at that member communication list, right? And actually get knocked off another big one this morning. And so once we get that kind of all leveled out, you know, I think, yeah, growth is hard because if you don't have the systems in place and you grow too fast, then what's the point in marketing? Because, and and people have asked me that before, why don't you scale up your Facebook ads? I'm like, our infrastructure is not tight enough Mm -hmm. as soon as infrastructure is tight enough, which is going to be very very soon, then we will blow up the Facebook ads. Because Mm -hmm. if we can't handle what we have happening right now in all the moving parts, and I'm speaking specifically about our membership program, like there's so many moving parts there between regular tasks and um, project tasks, right? Like we can't once until that's smooth, then exactly. I don't want to, I don't want to add a bunch of new members. Do we get new members every day? Yes. But like, I don't want to do a floodgate with a big outreach, a big Facebook spend because if our infrastructure is not there. Exactly. Exactly. I feel you. You will drown yourself. I feel you. That's exactly where I'm at. As far as like the mompreneur show is like, there's so many things that are not done. There's so many things that need tweaking that need setting up. Like for example, the episode 22, I just realized doesn't even have show notes. Like how horrible, like it just has like, like, so, so ladies, like, yeah, if you want to really take it to the next level, take the time off or have like the focused month or focus two months, like focus on one thing at a time, because if you're trying to do everything together, it's never going to happen. And so I love that, uh, Aaron, that you're focusing on client communications right now and that you're, you want to get that ironed out and then you move to the next thing. I think that's really, really smart. Goodness gracious. Like we're so out of time, but I have so many questions to ask you. I, I do have, okay. Two questions. One. And I'll ask one at a time. Um, When you meet these people, you meet them in conferences, how do you nurture um, the relationships beyond the small asks, beyond the little connections? Do you send them anything in the mail? Like how do you do do any of that? I do a little bit of that. Like I was at the car wash a couple months back and there was this um, 
in San Antonio, there's a wall, somebody graffitied, I love you so much and crossed out the you and wrote tacos. It's this, it became like this viral thing, like a year and a half ago or something, a year ago, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, so I saw like a coaster of that at the car wash. And I was like, this is perfect for Noah because he drinks, he needs a coaster and he loves tacos. And so I just got it, put it in a thing and sent it to his office. Like, and he had no idea. Like, it was just like, that's cool. And he, and that was right after he had introduced me to his developers who are my developers still like, and that was just like, Hey, thanks for the intro. Like that I would have so- never been able to build this without that intro. Right. So, okay. So what was his response? Like he was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, and he's okay. like, he's super short and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is no, the, <laughs> it's Noah's thing, but he just no capital letters. This is the most amazing thing ever. No, nope, nothing. That's it. That is, okay, but right. but like you obviously <laughs> yeah you obviously made his day. Like I mean, I get mail yeah. all the time, and I like oh my goodness, my day's made. But I don't always I forget to take the time and respond back. And I mean, I eventually do, but um, I, I agree how powerful the little sending gifts. It has to be. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just something tiny, little card, even just a card. Just right. send it over and just make the person feel appreciated because I think that's one of the things that people like want most is appreciation and and, yep. and the feeling of like okay I'm needed um so okay last question how do you balance everything goodness gracious you have this conference which is in October and I'm working on the details to come like I Yay! really 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 okay, want to okay. come so you need to be there it's gonna be amazing yes like I I know it's gonna be amazing it's totally okay so um and I'm so sad by the way that I didn't meet you at WGS because I was there I was there like for five years now and I completely did not ever like meet you but it was before I started this mompreneurial stuff yeah um yeah so that that would have been really cool to me um but anyway how do you balance your family life with all these different business projects that you have going on and your four bo- four boys I have two and I'm like ah, you have four boys and how do you balance it all um, I don't believe in the word balance. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a thing that we can really ever achieve because yes. there's always something that's going to tip us over. Absolutely. So I like the word harmony more. I also uh-huh. like the um, idea of having it all. I feel like I do have it all. And the reason I feel that way is because I've defined my all as something that's reasonable. Um, and I've also defined my all as something that's going to, that works for us and is not my mom's version of my all, which she's very supportive and she's, she's not critical at all, but, or my, um, uh, grandmothers or uncles or whoever, like their version of all is not what defines mine. Does that make sense? Really powerful. Yes, absolutely. So do you mind sharing like, what is your definition of all? My definition of all is a successful business, uh, happy people um, around me, um, which is family and, you know, just business partners and and all of that. And it's just taking things one thing at a time. I'm, I am ridiculously intentional with my time and scheduling that and being efficient. And I also, I'm at my office. <laughs> like when I'm at the office, I'm working. When I'm not at the office, I really try not to be unless it's like a, you know, hey, like yesterday, Jan was like, hey, what's happening with this thing? I can't save this. And I'm like, oh, sh- sorry, I forgot to tell you about that. Like, <laughs> which is my fault for not prepping her. Yeah. Um, so, I, but I, I mean, I work on the weekends and I, I do a little bit when I need to, um, but I really try to separate, um, separate from work when I'm not, at the office or I haven't blocked off like certain, like last night was a work session for me mm-hmm. because I'm lo- I don't, I can't work this Thursday. Right. So I had to kind of mm-hmm. get ahead. And so I what kind of, helps you, um, like what helps you stay true to those boundaries? Like, you know, when you're in office, you're working, when you're out, like how do you, what helps you be intentional about what you're doing at any given moment? Does it meet what I'm trying to accomplish? Right. Like, mm-hmm. am I present for my kids? Am I going to ruin my kids' lives by being on my computer all day long? Like I, I think maybe thinking about the negative consequences and I, yes. I'm, I'm like a habit person too. So like just try to stay out of that habit, like get your phone out of your room at night, which I'm not amazing at all the time, but I really try. Um, so I think the habit stuff really makes a difference and yeah. in, in intentionality. 
Absolutely. I have a whole scheme that I could talk for hours about. So Erin, I know that yeah. you are working on some kind of project, um, but it's not live yet. We'll link it up in um, in the show notes when it is. But can you tell me like about what, you, what you're going to teach there? Because I know that there's so many moms approaching you and asking you all these questions like this. Like, what are you going to be teaching on? I want to, um, can you tease us? I totally can. Goodness. Okay. Yeah. Because don't go here because there's nothing there. We're working on switching it over right now. But both, both we're moving it from one URL to another and both links are dead at the moment. Yeah. So, but it's, um, I've basically figured out sort of this system and flow for um, my own personal productivity and workflow and efficiency. Efficiency mm-hmm. is what's more important to me than productivity. Oh, and that's so, a quotable. Yeah. So many people talk about productivity in designing your most productive day, which we're going to talk about that too. But I think efficiency is where people kind of fall off or they're just not being their most efficient self. And so Mm -hmm. over the last several years and working with a team as a consultant and then doing my own thing and Mm -hmm. building this massive, this, the freezer cooking membership has been this massive thing. But what I found myself doing was in this cycle, plan, implement, evaluate, and then kill it. Um, You could also say kick blank um, if you wanted to. But, um, and so this, this whole cycle of planning, implementing, evaluating, planning, implement, evaluating, like literally over and over and over. And doing that is so efficient. And where people fall through the cracks, I think, is they start implementing and then they don't they can't finish is one thing, or they get something implemented and they don't properly evaluate mm-hmm. it And every different thing needs, you evaluate a different number, right? Depending on yeah. what the project is. And so it, but it becomes this like cycle. And if you can get yourself into that cycle and there's a whole other slew of things related to tasks. I know you mentioned the book rework, like rework. If anything has to get reworked in our business, it makes me bananas crazy, Mm -hmm. not good. Like we're going to change the way that works if there's rework happening here. Right. And so the systems and the processes, the automation, I'm huge into automation talking about the affiliate stuff. We do all that stuff weeks in advance, weeks in advance. And so sometimes in the moment, but most of the time weeks, right. I love how real you are. Yeah. Keeping it real. Yeah. On occasion, like, oh, we need to update the affiliate guide. Okay. Send that out tomorrow. Like sometimes it happens. So that that was actually like last week, but um, anyways, but these systems and, and how to plan, implement, evaluate, and build systems into your business, understanding how tasks work yeah. uh, and then placing them into your calendar. Um, and then also just the mentality of, you know, fear, overwhelm, decision fatigue, all of those things that kind of play in that mental game. Um, that's what we're talking about. Oh, right? that is so good. Cause my, my business, oh my goodness. It's like, it's about to blow up just because I'm like talking to people and, and we're planning stuff and, and I'm just like freaking out a little bit because I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta, um, take, I gotta take control of my time a lot more because there's so many times I'm sitting there on Facebook doing nothing. So that's really helpful. And I'm excited. So you should be in my, my, yes. my little, my what, data group Next, is, in a couple of weeks. We're going to get it started. So it's called peak plan, implement, evaluate, kill it. It's a play on peak performance peak efficiency. Um, so P I E K is, it is a misspelling, but it's really an acronym. Um, and we're calling it peak efficiency and, um, the peak efficiency masterclass will be what we, um, launch in September. And so we're going to, I'm going to take a smaller group. Um, okay. Count me in. So, Vicky's in. So we're going to do that. And it, again, neither of the sites are live. I think we're either about to switch them out. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, no, I totally get it. And like, we're told, this is like, we're not even, I mean, just send me the link whenever you're, you're done and, um, and I'll link it up because I know that there's so many mamas that are interested in this. And by the way, I really want you to, uh, come on the show again in September-ish. 
I think yeah. it'll be really fun. I think that yep. you have so much to share. And I know it took like a gazillion of your time, but I really want to read this comment by Renee Harris. And go. she's Renee. the girl. <laughs> she's the girl that I'm at Instagram. Vicky, it's so funny that you said you didn't meet Aaron Chase at WDS because you introduced me to everyone that year. Pat Flynn, Chris Ducker, JLD, Fizzle Guys. But Aaron was the one person I didn't meet through you. But I did get to meet her. And I remember, Aaron, you were toying with writing a cookbook about feeding boys or maybe it was a preteens, teens in general thing. I yeah. Is she from Hard Lotion? Yes, she is. Yes, I do. We did meet. I remember. Yes, I was like, Renee, that name is so cute. Yes. So she, we did. I remember standing in the lobby at the theater. There were a couple of Stephanie Langford. Maybe? Yes, yes. She was there yes. that year too. Oh, that's crazy that we didn't meet. Wow. That okay. Is so, well, she's wondering well, if you Renee, ever wrote that book. Hello. Um, I haven't because my boys aren't old enough, but it is on the back burner because my oldest is almost 12. And so as soon as I have one or maybe two teenagers, um, I do want to write that book. I have all the recipes and it would be like a satirical story and cookbook on how to feed teenage boys, like so satirical. Like I want to know about farts at the dinner table and just nasty boy stuff. I'm sorry. I, I have it. to say this on your no. show, but no, like boys great. are so, okay, seriously. No, let's just go here really quick. So we had, um, Thursday night, it was the last soccer game. It was the last baseball game. And then we went out to dinner with like the team at this like outdoor play place where the kids can just run around literally like an hour, all four of my boys running around. They're drenched in sweat because it's like 95 degrees here. Right. So we all get in the car to go home and I couldn't breathe. I'm not kidding. It was, I was like rolling the window down, like trying to breathe out the window because they smelled so boys are crazy. Renee, yes, I'm going to write that book one day. I just don't know when. When they're a little that. when they're a little older. Erin, I love that <laughs> you gave yourself permission to put on the back burner and just do it later. And it's totally okay to do that. Love oh yeah, that. I have a ridiculous number of things on the back burner. Um, but and they'll come up when it's time for them to come up and we will knock it out of the park when it's time to knock it out of the park. So. Wow. Okay, Erin, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you so much. You are amazing. Well, wow, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It's been really fun. Absolutely. Ladies, oh my goodness, this is so much fun. I'm so glad you were able to just sit behind the scenes and listen to our conversation. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here. I appreciate you so, so much. I hope that you enjoy this conversation with Erin. I mean, can you tell how amazing she is? And I really hope that you will go back into episode 20, 22 and listen to that episode of her story is incredible. You can go on our website, mompreneurshow.com. You can go to uh, our YouTube channel and you can go to iTunes. I don't brag about iTunes enough. Go to iTunes podcast search mompreneur show download the episodes and listen to them on the go is the greatest thing ever and if you love it leave us a review okay i gotta run uh, but thank you so much for being here join us live next monday at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern right here on facebook live and i'm your host vicky lashenko and this is the show that helps mompreneurs like you win in business without losing at home thank you so much for being here and i'll catch you next monday bye-bye <laughs>